Okay, so uh, last talk of the day, let me first of all maybe say thank you for all your interesting and inspiring talks. And also thank you to our two organizers who put this together. Um, I want to talk a bit about, uh, about mappings in, uh, in film. Um, I call it an advanced introduction to maps because I don't like self-contradictory statements. Um, um, I want to start, because we also have some novices here, I, I want to start a little bit um, 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 a little bit earlier and a little bit at the basics and then mostly give an uh, overview of sort of the power that this mechanism has. Um, um, that's not really obvious from the documentation. So, um, one thing that uh, Wim has, which is maybe a bit of limited um, usefulness, but you can define these abbreviations, and then if you type in the left hand side, it actually puts the right hand side into your buffer. And then, if you are too lazy to remember how you check for inequality in Lua, you just define the normal C++ check for inequality and it replaces you with the Lua one. Um, so it, it's, it, it's a little bit useful, it's also not too complicated. Um, <coughs> uh, so maps are way more general and they are anyway the main means by which you use them. Um, but there you can really go and adapt it to your workflow. So you can, if you like, you can in insert mode map the opening bracket to insert both an opening and a closing bracket and move the cursor back one space to the left so it just opens two brackets and puts the cursor in the middle. If you like this or not, it's up to you. Um, you can do stuff like map control Q to save all the files in pretty editor so that it behaves more like a, like any other GUI, which you can mostly also quit with uh, control Q. And I really like, for example, this uh, GD command, which by some regex magic uh, tries to jump to the definition of a keyword, which often works, so sometimes also not, but it mostly leads it to the right place in your code. Um, but it also just jumps there out of your context. So what you can do is you can go to the command line with column, say split, enter, gets you back to the buffer, and then you're left in the upper one of the splits and jump there to the definition. So you have two buffers with a definition on top. So this uh, CI is carriage return, so it's basically equivalent to hitting the enter key for executing this command. And then these maps are really powerful though, they string a bunch of basic commands together that you would enter into the, uh, into the editor, um, type in the left hand side and it executes the right hand side, it can jump between modes, um, yeah, use the special keys like motions. So I already hinted at this, of course it's huge, uh, it, it can be really helpful to the regular user if he gets a bit into it. It can improve your workflow, but those are also things that plugins mostly can't help you with because it, it's really about your workflow. So I really like this opening the brackets thing. It's also a bit annoying in some places, but other people might just find this completely irritating and don't want it, but it, it's easy to do on your own. Um, of course, for plugin developers, that's of central importance. We don't need to discuss this. Um, so just looking at the various options that you have in Vim for providing, if you write plugins to provide um, your, your features to the user, you have maps which are fast and can integrate really well into the workflow because you are anyway often in normal mode and uh, uh, hacking in some keys. The one problem with them is a bit accessibility. Once you have 200 maps in your FIM RC, you'll probably only use 20 of them on a regular basis and forgot about one half completely. Um, menus, on the other hand, provide a good overview but are definitely not fast enough. 
um, and X commands, so which are this, uh, so which are new commands you can define for the FIM command line. And I think the official name is X commands that the documentation uses. They are very powerful and flexible, but they are also not fast enough. So mappings are, ju are still just faster for all, for like the 20 or 30 things you have to do regularly. And and if you know about a bit all your, of all the options, we can really um, we can really achieve the best usability. And and this can also work together in some surprising ways. Um, so, so, so for me, for my workflow, at least to be uh, for film to be really useful, I want I want some things that the shell has to offer, like tab completion uh, for file names, but also for other things like um, like options, which can be really useful. <coughs> um, so we can actually, and we also seen this today, we can provide uh, shell commands via film script, but what we can also do is uh, provide a tab completion that can maybe even out match shell ones uh, in some ways, which I will show you. Um, and that may be a bit of a contentious point. It may or may not be possible to beat, uh, uh, to beat an IDE for, for a specific language, because that's a really um, that might be really hard. There are a lot of developers for some IDEs putting in a lot of hours. Um, but what we can do with Vim is uh, provide some consistent performance for a dozen languages uh, easily or for the half dozen uh, things we use differently, which might not be only programming languages, but then also LaTeX and even help with writing configuration files and uh, documentation. But the key point is access and, uh, and configurability because otherwise all, all the work you put into a plugin is really sort of lost if nobody can use it. <coughs> uh, okay, I saw all the, all the examples I provide are in film script so Every programming language is stupid anyway, so you might as well use FilmScript for your, uh, to configure your editor. Is at least my opinion. It's, it's a normal scripting language with dynamic, dynamic data structures, passing by reference, uh, all the things we know anyway. It has some really weird aspects, like some weird scoping, which is also necessary because things like variables and functions can be and sometimes need to be linked to things like buffers, windows, um, and even script files that you write in, in film script. Um, <coughs> yeah, file type plugins are, are a piece of film script that is uh, executed once uh, when the file type for a buffer is set. set. So, what you can do there, for example, is define some maps that are local to a buffer, and because those are then defined for every buffer of this file type, you have some you can uh, do have file type specific maps. Uh, so again, to this example with the uh, um, with the brackets that might actually be useful everywhere. The next the next example where you open where you open a block. With, uh, with the curly bracket and enter, and then it puts the curly bracket, the closing bracket, and the curve in the line between, that's actually only helpful for C, and actually not so helpful if you have um, stuff like Python uh, dictionaries uh, or Lua tables. Um, so maps also support the different modes, so in different modes you might want to do different things. So what both these examples do, and in third mode they just provide to the closing brackets, and in, um, in visual mode they put the brackets or the block around the, around the content that you marked, and then this even runs your ident program on the block you just inserted. And yeah, and here we can, this way we can just provide um, 
different act, slightly different action for different modes. Um, <clears throat> once you want to do some things which are more uh, complicated, we will actually have to fall back to provide some implementation for it, which can be film script, can also be other things. Um, but my main point is anyway about, uh, about the maps. So the way we do this is the mapping switches to the command line, calls a function um, and returns. And then this function, what this function does is if you have your cursor on a word, it, it gets that word from the buffer with this expand C word um, call and then just assembles it and calls your, uh, calls your browser so you can just put up an online dictionary for the word under the cursor with, with one keystroke or a couple of keystrokes, however you might want to configure this. Um, <coughs> yeah, and of course the uh, implementation is more complicated and gets even more complicated than this. Um, I will therefore also come back to this example later. There are still a lot of things missing, like a Firefox is set as the default browser and we don't know whether it's actually executable. Um, so <coughs> I will come back to this, but um, now one thing and there it starts to get um, sort of really powerful is um, uh, is expression maps. You can put this uh, sort of modifier in when you define the map and then what happens is so the, what the first map does is just it puts up the grab <coughs> and um, on the film command line this percentage sign is will be replaced with the name of your with the file name of your current buffer when the call is made so it's put this grab on the command line, it will then grab to your current file and move the and move the move the cursor two spaces to the to the left so that you can type in your the, the string you want to search for. Now what the third map does in in visual mode is that now instead of this uh, getting executed immediately as a map, this first gets evaluated. And what this is, is just a string concatenation um, with this access to some special variable which is the contents of a special register that refers to the thing that is selected in visual mode which doesn't work under Windows, there's also a solution to do this under Windows um, So it actually uses the strings to assemble uh, to assemble your mapping and then execute this mapping so there is some words that you selected so it assembles this mapping again puts the cursor two spaces to the left in front of this so you can modify this further and then um, and, and then run the grab command for the word you have selected and of which necessary it is an expert uh, the, the what thing? Uh, the expert. Uh, the, so this is what this turns into an expression map. So the others just get evaluated as if you would type in this this command sequence into Vim. So just the uh, crap. And so this gets evaluated as a string and then is run as a map like this. And I can only do this, like put the word that I have selected here when I when I take this uh, detour. Um, <clears throat> so the next thing will be uh, command line maps, which are maybe a little less known already. So going back to my former examples, you can just do on the command line mappings. Um, I like this for example because on the German keyboard uh, the backspace is. Uh, hard to reach and also control X uh, and then Z is uh, and then Z is sort of easy to type so that actually when I do some search just puts a capture in moves my cursor two spaces to the left and I can put in the uh, what I want to the regex for inside the inside the 
capture. <coughs> so now, um, just as a sort of training exercise, uh, we can provide our own implementation of uh, uh, of, the, of deleting of all words, which my shell does, which alt backspace it deletes a whole word on the fib command. And you can also do this with uh, build in with control W. We're just gonna quickly do it ourselves as a little exercise to see how uh, where we can take these mappings. Um, so the central trick is this: you can define a map with the, with the left hand side, and then use this special control backspace E character sequence uh, to put it into a mode where it, where it evaluates this expression and replaces the command line with it. So this expression can then be a fin script function that the command line is replaced with and this has simply has the interface to get code without arguments and has to return the replacement string. So what you do is quite, um, this is just what you have to do, you get the command line as a string, you get the current cursor position, then you can split the command line in, into a head and tail, um, um, replace, modify the thing in front of the cursor, um, set, the, set the position and return, and return the uh, we turn the concatenation of the two strings with the replaced head. So the replacement is just we check whether the last um, the last character of head, which is the string in front of your cursor. So this is the this is the character right in front of the cursor. If that matches a word character, we substitute we use substitute to delete the whole word and. If it, and otherwise we use substitute, which is a bit of an overkill, but we use substitute to just replace the last character so that it works normally. Um, and then return it. So, so this is how this uh, interface works. <coughs> and now we want something like control P on the, on the command line. So keyword uh, completion, which in the buffer works quite nicely to um, to um, to find the names of variables you typed previously and so on. Um, now some completion might be nicer here, but Control P also works in LaTeX. Uh, so words you use often, um, um, or words you have used before, you can just uh, use again. You can just quickly get, and it's also for different reasons quite useful to have. This on the command line, for example, if you if you assemble substitute commands, it's just really useful to um, to be able to complete the word you have uh, um, uh, you have some word you have in your buffer and then get it on the command line really quickly and really also get this exact word you have in the buffer on the command line. So we can actually use the same trick as before. We just need to cycle through the different keywords. So it, it gets a bit more complicated. We use buffer local variables to um, to save some internal state of, um, of of this completion function. And then every time we just the user hits Control P again, we just give the next uh, the next replacement. Uh, I will upload the slides. You can look at this code um, code on your own, and I will also link to the plugin that does this. Okay, now moving on to, um, could you give me the white cup? Um, yeah. uh, so, any questions thus far? Okay. <coughs> you mentioned in short file types. Of course, I know file types yeah. and I. Uh, Okay, but, but, but when changing between two several buffers with different file types, I used to write SQL and Visual Basic and uh, wrote a, a <coughs> script which uh, was sourced with file type SQL and one fit. And now, and when I switched to a different file type, I had to 
write another script file which unmaps all the things I read, uh, which for SQL and uh, loads virtual baby. But it works, but it nice would it be to just make some things undone? But do you, yeah, so do you know what I mean? It's yeah, so this is why I this buffer locality exists. So this is why you can have buffer local maps. Because every file is necessarily a different buffer and you can have buffer local functions, you have, can have buffer local variables. Yeah. Mappings also, also buffer specific? Uh, yeah, so mappings can, for example, be buffer specific. Um, until now we did some bad programming choices like using public functions that pollute the public namespace um, and also it's not really easy to configure but that's another issue so the first thing um, the first thing we do is make those scripts local with this, um, with this S scoping, then it's local to the script, and then instead of the S colon in your um, in your map definitions, you have to use this um, SID tag. Um, but this only works inside the script, so it's still not configurable because you need to hard code this inside your script. Um, so this is why the, another trick exists. Um, <clears throat> you can you can use this special plug in uh, tags, which is essentially a special type of key uh, with your mappings. And this plug key is a key that you cannot produce on your keyboard, so the user himself will not define any plug mappings because he cannot hit the plug key um, on his keyboard. And then the thing to do is. Um, after the plug, to make sure that you don't get any name collisions, you write the name of your plug-in and the name of the functionality and then it's verbose enough, hopefully, that you won't get any name collisions of any kind. You should be a bit more verbose here, but the wall isn't big enough. Um, and now what the user can do um, and now he cannot use no remap anymore. Now he has to use the pure C map because now he actually remaps the map. Now he can put this into the fim C. So that can now be in a different script file. Um, and so now it's truly really configurable. And and even if you give uh, give those maps names that are more verbose than this, also sort of self-documenting. So ideally it would say something like uh, maps command line word delete and then you immediately see that control backspace is mapped to command line word delete. <coughs> so I will get uh, quickly into user defined commands because this is maybe not so much about maps in the end, this is more about achieving usability. So the good news is they work um, um, really sort of like maps in that you define how you want to access them and then you define a, a call in film script to, to serve as a callback. <coughs> they have some nice features so you can define command line completion so you for a make plugin, you might have a have a function that sets the make file, and then while you browse around in your project and go into subdirectories, if you run make, it will always go to that make file um, and execute your make in that directory. Um, and and for this and for this new command, you can define some tab completion, which for setting the make file, of course, is file and you can just easily tap complete the make file on your keyboard um, and it's just as easy as on the shell it's even a bit better actually um, because this file completion of film is quite nice <coughs> you can also give your um, you can also give custom uh, completions which 
just this is very schematic. So always sort of looks like this, and you can provide a script local function again to actually run this uh, completion. So and then um, opening bracket, just like maps, this commands and call some function. This Q args gives the string, so gives the argument to give to the to the make command and gives it to your function, and then it can handle it. Uh, so about this tab completion. So this is again a function that has a specific interface that you have to adhere to. Um, you get the arc lead and two other, um, two other which is a command line and a curler position which we also have seen before. So the arc lead is the most important thing. That is the thing you complete. So this is the keyword.